Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I'm gonna be talking about some of the most underrated EDC folding knives in existence now in 2023. I've got 10 for you. And uh, it's my pleasure to announce that all of them should be available right now. I've hand selected these. It is very likely if you watch this whole video that you will find your next knife. Bold claim, Metal Complex, bold claim. Sit back and watch. There's uh, there's something here for everybody. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me. And please, that was a good throw, right? Follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. You see that stick? No movement whatsoever. Go back and watch again. All right. Starting off here with number 10, this is a big one, right? A lot of people know about this. Just because people know about it doesn't make it, you know, not underrated. More people should know about this. This knife is like a cheat code for the EDC folding knife world, and that's the Maxace Black Mirror coming in titanium, carbon fiber if you want it, and M394, get ready, $142. This knife is ridiculous ridiculously good for the money. It is baffling that that's what they want for this knife, right? Still expensive, but way less expensive than some of the competition. There are companies making knives with less, you know, overall zest, less overall quality, and the same materials for double the price. Uh, this it's what, it's what I mean when I say this knife is like a cheat code. It is amazing. Uh, if you've seen this knife before and you're like, eh, I don't know, it's really that good. Max Ace has some of the best execution in the world. Yes, I said that. That's correct. You heard correctly. In the world when it comes to production folding knives. Moving on here to number nine. A knife that people are aware of, but my God, is the CJRB Echo Button Lock underrated. And the reason is, is because it exists in the shadow of the CJRB Pyrite, which is... Unde it's, you cannot argue it. The Pyrite is substantially more popular than the Echo. But the Echo is almost, I mean, in a lot of ways, there's an argument to be made for the Echo over the Pyrite. This is at base something like a $55 knife, AR RPM 9. You can get carbon fiber. You can also get micarta, right? It's got the opening hole and it's got a front flipper if you want to use it, or you can just ignore it if you don't like the front flipper. This is a wonderful, wonderful EDC knife, and lefties can enjoy it too because it's been milled out for both sides. Fantastic budget option. Moving on here, a knife that I've been talking about a lot, number eight, and that's the Kaiser Brat. I know, I keep bringing this knife up. This is a G10 Integral for 90 bucks in uh, 154 CM. You know, truthfully, had they just made this a sandwich construction or pillar construction knife with two separate pieces of G10, it still would be a good buy at uh, 90 bucks in uh, the Kaiser's beautiful tumbled finish and 154 CM blade, but it would be a little bit less interesting. There's really not necessarily a major advantage to having an integral other than just ease of maintenance. You don't, you can't take it apart, it's just the pivot, right? So that's it. You wanna get the blade out of there, you just take the pivot out, that's it. There's nothing else other than the pocket clip. Um, it is a beautiful EDC profile. It's very easy to manipulate. It's kind of a bonus that it's a button lock and not a frame lock. So the frame is completely and totally solid. Honestly, it's just a really, really good knife for 90 bucks. And it comes in one of my favorite steels, 154 CM. Moving on here to number seven, another knife that people are aware of, but holy crap, there's a lot more people out there who don't know <laughs> about Kunwu, specifically the Tao and the S Tau, and the Tau 2. These things come in uh, Vanex, which is currently my favorite steel ever. Vanex used to be exclusive to the ultra, ultra, ultra premium territory of the knife world. You want a knife in Vanex, you are gonna pay a lot of money. And listen, you still have to pay a lot of money for Vanex, right? It basically can't rust. And it has excellent performance, especially when it's heat treated correctly. And I'm happy to say Kunwu is hitting the heat treat on these guys just about perfect and also executing very well with the rest of the materials, in this case, titanium, right? Sheep's foot, or you can get it in a drop point, right? And also, there's a lot of different configurations. I'll, I'll link everything down below. You can even get it for less money in LMAX, which is also a great choice and also a steel that's properly heat treated by Kunwu. Uh, but if you want to pick this up, it comes in, and for those of you who know, you'll know that this is a good deal. Uh, it's coming in at uh, as low as $260. That is amazing for Vanax. That is amazing, flat out. $260 is a lot of money. I'm not arguing that. But if we're going to talk a pocket knife that is manufactured 
and executed in a premium way and is utilizing properly heat treated Vanak steel, that is incredible. Uh, ridiculously, ridiculously underrated. More people need to know about this. This is like one of those one and done knives. You, I mean, like, I, I love this thing. And you can get a milled clip now. Moving on here. Um, I, another one that is still people know about, but my, it's there are so many budget knives overshadowing it. And that's the Kershaw Iridium. Now, I'm flexing a little bit here. This is the special edition in, in uh, titanium and 20 CV, which to my knowledge is not available anymore. And anyways, it was more money. But the base Kershaw Iridium is aluminum, gray aluminum and D2, which I think looks great and comes in at about 65 bucks. This is an ambidextrous design with pocket clip mounting positions on both sides. A beautiful profile, a beautiful blade, beautiful action. Something happened with Kershaw's Chinese OEM. I don't know if it's the same one. Maybe it's a completely different factory, but wow, these are so much better than what I remember the cheap Kershaw's being. Kershaw, some Kershaw's are made in the USA and those are great. Some Kershaw's are made in China and those are the ones that you typically find at Walmart. And if you look closely, you're like, Ugh, this is kind of, uh, did somebody make this with boxing gloves? I mean, what, what was it? What's, what was happening here? You know, um, not super great. But the Kershaw Iridium is beautiful. It's really awesome. I wish that I could give you guys a link for the titanium one. But trust me, if you're looking for a knife under 100 bucks, the Kershaw Iridium is not a bad choice at all. Moving on here, uh, another really excellent one that I feel like almost nobody knows about, the Kaiser Pinkerton Escort Barlock. What? No, nobody talks about this knife. I, the Kaiser Pinkerton that I can remember from a long time ago, the Pinkerton designer, I remember looking at it and thinking, that's a really nice looking knife. Why doesn't anybody talk about it? This is back, it was like titanium and S35VN and I think it had like a black blade. It was a frame lock. At some point they decided, let's do a, a an aluminum and CPM 20 CV version and then let's do a micarta and one, I think it's 154 CM and and you know give them appropriate price tags i want to say the 20 cv one runs 170 the uh micarta and 154 cm runs uh 90 bucks both fair amazing knife ambidextrous great overall blade profile i reviewed this and i was so blown away i think i actually titled it underrated or something like that nobody ever talks about this knife it's totally available in both configurations, and it's awesome. It, it's a, it's a nearly the same size as like a Benchmade Griptilian. It just has a better, more, a little more angular, but still comfortable, better looking profile, in my opinion. Really, really nice knife. Great ergonomic profile. Great, uh, you know, utilitarian blade shape, right? Simple drop point blade. Just a good knife. It's just, I think it's flying under the radar because it looks really plain. Moving on here, these should be owned by many more people, and that's the Spartan Harzi. The Spartan Harzi is made in the United States, and it is absolutely 100% in the exact same tier as Hinderer knives, Chris Reeve knives, Les George knives, the true USA Demco knives, not the 8020.5 from Taiwan. I'm talking about the actual Demco knives. These are amazing. It's it's what happens when you combine the Hinder XM18 with something like the Chris Reeve Umnumzon. We have a, this is fully made in the United States, by the way, uh, and not like, oh, well, most of it, like 51% is made in the USA and everything else is made in China and that's how we keep our prices down so low. No, this is truly all in-house USA, which is sometimes really hard for people to understand. Why is this USA made folding knife $400 and this USA made folding knife is only 150 or 200 because much more of the less expensive knife is outsourced than they're explaining, right? They can still call it made in the USA uh, when not everything is actually made in the USA. It's not smoke and mirrors. It's not a magic trick. Or it's, I mean, it's not like, you know, somebody's just being really charitable. That's why. It's just that simple. So something like the Spartan Harzi that is made small batch and 100% in the United States is definitely going to cost more money. Yes, even if you could buy a gun for that. High point owners. You could buy two high points for that. You idiot. I would much rather have one knife than two high points. I'll tell you what. Anyways, Spartan Harzi. Beautiful. USA construction, USA build. Fantastic uh, heat treat on this S45VN blade, which is just wonderful. Uh, this knife is phenomenal. Big, tanky, robust. Gives you that powerful feeling. If you don't like big knives, you might not like it, right? They make a smaller one. They make a 3.25 inch one. 
I don't know why these aren't as popular as the Hinders or as the Umnumzans. They're every bit as high quality. I think for some reason people just aren't sure because we don't have the same sort of online legacy, right? The Umnumzans and the XM18s, everybody, oh, you got to have that because it's the best. They are. They're great. These are just as good. Take it from somebody who owns multiple hinderers and has owned many Chris Reeve knives, right? These are just as good. Moving on here, number three. Let's talk about a less expensive USA-made knife that is also very, very good. Another example of Kershaw knocking it out of the park, and that's the Kershaw Launch 16. I think this is probably the best Kershaw Launch model. Yes, it has got that overly tactical, super tactical look, right? It's got the Tanto serrated, right? It's black. It's got the track deck inserts. It's all that. But it's not some goofball tack force, right? Like, you know, seatbelt cutter, glass breaker. It doesn't have all that meaningless crap. This is actually a really, really well-made knife. And it's got a fantastic profile. And it's in M4. CBM M4. It's 150 bucks. In-house design. Fully automatic, USA made, right? Now, it's not the same caliber as, you know, Hinderer or Harzi, right? It's not fully, but mostly made in the United States. Wow. I don't know where else you can get USA M4 for that price. This is a great knife. I'll choke those serrations down. I hate serrations. I love this knife so much, and it's such a good deal. I, if you want an automatic knife, right? I consider this. Moving on here, a knife that I don't think anybody expects to be on this list. The Gerber Sedulo, made in the USA. Somehow, amidst all of the bleh that Gerber has made over however many years, there is there, there are a couple of shimmering crystals, just golden rays of hope, right? This, the Sedulo or Sedulo, however you want to pronounce it. I don't know. I don't know what the word means. Google it and then tell me the definition and how to pronounce it. And then you can pretend like you knew and you didn't just Google it, right? Whatever you want to do. The 125. This is what the bug out should have been, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, the bug out's thinner and it's a little bit lighter. And wow, yeah, great. You can be a gray man or whatever that means. Uh, the Sedulo, in my opinion, is a way better knife or Sedulo. Way better knife. Way more solid feeling in hand. Still lightweight, still compact, made well, and made in the United States for, get ready, 125 s S30V, and to my knowledge, properly heat treated. I was so shocked by how good this knife was. I, I'm Honestly, it was a Gerber, right? Everybody who watched that video, who, you know, reached out to me or in the comments or on Instagram was like, I couldn't believe that you were recommending a Gerber, but I picked it up and you know what, you're right. Not to toot my own horn, but... You know, I'm usually right about that stuff. If you have one, if you have a knife, and if you have that, let people know how you feel in the comments. I, I guarantee you this knife shocked more people who took a chance on it than what other people might guess. It's a really, really good knife. And at 125, I mean, gosh, you know, even with the handles are plastic, they are so much more solid than the bug out. Moving on here to number one, easily the number one most underrated knife. Even though it's doing well, even though people are paying attention to it, this knife deserves way more praise. I cannot believe they pulled this off. The Kershaw Livewire. What the actual F? Uh, Kershaw of all companies, right? We know that this OTF market is controlled by a superpower, right? And there are competitors, but man, they it's really hard for anybody to compete, right? Some of the best, we're talking USA. I'm not talking about the pretend, you know, USA. I'm not talking about freaking Ravencrest or whatever those other. Don't let those brands fool you guys. Like, don't. <laughs> don't. The actual USA competitors, the Ultratech, the Axial Shift, the, um, the Guardian Tactical Recon 35. Heavy, heavy hitters, right? No real competition until the Kershaw Livewire came along. It might just be the best OTF in this territory, in the USA sub-250 territory, right? There is actually, it sounds like a really specific thing, and there's a lot of, the, I mean, it, to get in here and to be, you know, known and to make an impact is not easy. The Kershaw Livewire arguably, you know, maybe second only to the Guardian Tactical Recon 35 has beautifully smooth smooth action. Way easier to manipulate and deploy than the Ultratech while maintaining, yes, maintaining the same level of power. 
and the same level of overall quality, which people would not expect from Kershaw. A lot of people look at this, and I can read your mind. $240 for a Kershaw, I ain't paying that much. Go down to local Walmart, you pay $35 for a Kershaw. You can ignore those guys, because they have absolutely no idea what they're looking at or talking about. The chassis is way more complicated. The fact that it's an OTF, the fact that it's a USA OTF from Kershaw, and they actually executed it correctly. Beautiful blade profile. Very easy to manipulate. That curved short clip is perfect. If you're looking for an, a USA OTF in this department and you, you know, you're aware of all four of them and you would put the live wire at the bottom just basing on like looking at it and you're not sure because it's a Kershaw, put it way up at the top, man. Put it way up at the top. It might just be the best. That's it for my list. I hope you found something that you liked or were interested in. Like I said, all of these knives will be listed right down in the description. You can check them out if you want to. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. Um, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on the Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.